welcome to Stan the Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Stan Osterman, and our show today is called Hydrogen. It's not just for Zeppelins anymore. A little tongue in cheek there. They don't do it in Zeppelins anymore. And we're going to talk about the latest in technology news from the U.S. Department of Energy's annual merit review held in Washington, D.C. last week. The merit review is where all of the heavy hitters from the academia, government, and the industry come together and share notes on the latest breakthroughs in hydrogen technology. That's right, live from ThinkTech Studios here in Honolulu, Ms. Rachel James will fill us in on the latest cutting edge, outside the envelope, highest ranked, and voted most likely to save the world ideas from Washington, D.C., of all places. Who'd have thought that Washington could actually produce anything worthwhile? But they did, and Rachel will be here to fill us in with all the latest. But with none of the media spin associated, or none of the guan, political guano attached. That's guano, G-U-A-N-O, it's a real world. Look it up in your Funkin' Wagnall or just look it up on Google, I don't care. By the way, if you want to ask any questions or participate in today's discussion, you can tweet us at thinktech-h-i or call us at area code 415-871-2474. Operators are standing by. So Rachel, welcome to the show. Seems like just minutes ago we had our last talk. Uh, have you fully recovered from your trip? I have. At least I think so. We'll see what comes out of my mouth, and then, okay. then maybe. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't back, bring back any of that slimy political stuff with you? I tried to wash most of it off. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. We pre think tech, we appreciate it here. Yes. So tell us what the merit review is all about. You know, we, we talked about it in the intro a little bit, but yep. give us a, a little bit more in-depth insight onto what the merit review does. Okay. So the annual merit review is the Department of Energy's way to allow... Um, essentially allow the partners in the industries and stakeholders across the board to come and see where the money has gone. Um, so I think particularly it's an awesome way for people who are interested in the technologies that the Department of Energy is forwarding um, to learn about them. But it's also an awesome thing for people in the industry, as you mentioned, the academics, um, intellect and industry, it's kind of a mashup of those two. Um, so it's a good opportunity for the projects to be reviewed. Um, they're critiqued as well. So that merit review piece is you have not only just academics doing review, but you have industry partners, you have stakeholders in the field, you have people from different countries, different states, um, who are looking at your projects and looking at what you ambition to do, and then also look at what you've done and how it could apply, and it's a good opportunity for you to kind of test yourself along the process um, as you forward the project that you've gotten from the Department of Energy. And this is all hydrogen focused. It's it's not all energy projects, right. it's strictly hydrogen. Right, so this annual review was both the Vehicle Technologies Office as well as the Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Office. So we had two kind of concurrent areas underneath the Department of Energy moving forward. Mm -hmm. And about how many folks attended this year? Oh, time? goodness. Um, I mean, roughly, I know it's, it's probably you weren't You know, I can't yet. count. I went to law school. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'd say I, there were hundreds. Okay. Um, Multiple yeah, it's usually hundreds. pretty big. It's usually yeah. several hundred people to a thousand people. It's, yes. it's a lot of folks. They ran out of popsicles at the break, so I feel oh, like well, that. That, that says the whole story right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, were there any particular things that stood, stood out in your memory from, uh, you yeah. know, projects that came up or breakthroughs that were, were announced? Definitely. So Simple Fuel is one that stood out kind of immediately. Last year they won the competition for hydrogen fueling stations. Um, and so the project that they won was the, the project wins. And then if they're able to execute what they propose, they win a million dollars. Wow. And so they were able to, and they showed their progress over the past year. And so they had um, a fueling station that they proposed built and available for the community. And really what it does is it showcases a different way of doing hydrogen dispensing, because um, much of the efforts in hydrogen have gone toward making a smooth transition from how you regularly fill up your gas tank to now just fill it with hydrogen. So you have a lot of fast fill, you do your five to four minute fills, and it's at oftentimes co-located with existing gas stations. But the simple fuel is a standalone. It's kind of meant to be um, in a community or in like a common space where you can plug in or link up your car to this fueling station and leave it for a little bit. So whether that's 30 minutes, whether that's an hour, um, whether it's at your house and overnight. So it's really meant to provide the flexibility of personal hydrogen use and not necessarily that commercial scale across the board use. Um, so I thought that was pretty innovative and it just really displayed the accessibility that communities can have to hydrogen infrastructure that is relatively low impact. There's not a lot of hoop to hoo to get it into a community, so they're taking orders. Well, so uh, if you recall, how, mm. how much can they make a day hydrogen-wise? Um, so they don't store the hydrogen, so, so they make and dispense. Okay. okay. 
Yeah, but I'm not, I don't remember the numerics for how much they dispense okay. each day. I want to say two kilograms, because I believe they said that you could, if you wouldn't, if you didn't fully deplete like your vehicle, you should be able to cap it off in mm. a night's time. So it kind of is almost like battery charging your car. Very much it, like it, that. It gives you the option to be a hydrogen quick fill if you go to a regular station. Right. Or do a slow fill at home or a slow fill at a, like say at exactly. work. Exactly. Maybe yep. have PV at work that uh, can supply the electrolysis, electrolysis or whatever. Right. And but you fill over a, a whole day, yep. eight hours at work or whatever. Very much That's like great. that. That's great. Yeah. Any other projects that stood out to you? Yeah. So they had reports on H2 at scale, which is Sandia. It's actually a conglomerate of the national labs, but Sandia is really leading the charge um, as well as InRail. And what they showcase is hydrogen as grid stability, as well as making that transition to other industries. So using it as storage on the utility, but then making it available as well for transportation sectors and using it. I mean, we talk kind of about using it in cooking and just the various applications of hydrogen. Um, H2 at scale is a model that explores what that could look like. So that was first introduced last year. Um, they got a lot of input from the different people who came, and then they used that input to put in data and showcase the different ways that hydrogen can be deployed at scale. So would that be something that maybe the state could bring, is it Sandia? It's, Sandia a, it's a bunch of them. Okay. It's like all of the labs, I think. It's like okay. five at least, I believe. Could bring them out to make a pitch to HECO? I definitely be? think it's information that HECO should have available. Mm. Um, yeah, for sure. So, and it did apply to like a nine, nine gigawatt scale? I think grid. the input you, like the parameters that you input into the model um, is kind of what dictates the sizing, but you can, you can kind of identify what applications you'd like to use hydrogen and at what numerics, um, and then the model is supposed to be able to represent how that can be done and then, you know, depending on what the economics are for wherever region you are, that helps to identify, like, okay, yes, it's technically possible, it's engineering possible, these are the savings that you could see, this is the manner in which you could deploy these technologies. Um, so it's a baseline of what you want to see, what capabilities you're looking for, and at what scale you need it, and then identifying how, how that information can then apply for you to be able to integrate it. It sounds like they, they had a business case built into it, too. It's super comprehensive. Um, the business case is something that whatever the user would have to identify better. Um, they did have some models that talked about um, like hydrogen at scale deployed essentially, like how do you do it? So how do you take this model and the information and then bring it to industry or bring it to community, you know, bring it to governments? Um, but they're still working on that. So it's an ongoing project. The first year was kind of the baseline of establishing the model. And I think this next year they'll be working more on seeing how you can take that information and then if in some way deploy it. Any specific transportation breakthroughs or uh, fuel cell transportation announcements or anything? Um, I don't recall any huge announcements. They were small as in nano. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know. Get don't get me going, please. Um, but there are a lot of like, okay, so I'm not that smart, but there are all these tiny ways. Like, nanotechnology. Yes, nanotechnology yes, um, um, in ways to store hydrogen. So essentially getting things super lightweight, um, allowing a lot of versatility mm -hmm. um, and multiple applications. So especially when we talk about like mid-sized vehicles or like mm -hmm. heavy duty vehicles, um, they definitely emerge as a better way to use renewable energy right. in larger vehicles because we couldn't do, you know, super gigantic batteries to carry large vehicles. Okay, so. to expand this conversation and get yes. away from the puns, okay. um, <laughs> the nanotechnology as I understand it mm. allows you to store hydrogen at a more dense level right. than liquid hydrogen, yes. but not have to deal with the temperature, the super low temperatures. In other words, mm -hmm. if you have nano storage technology available, mm -hmm. you can store more hydrogen and put it in a smaller space than if you yes. have liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen is like minus 460 degrees Celsius or something. Yes. So super cold and super hard to get there. And then that takes away all the compression. You don't, you don't have to add all the energy in to compress the hydrogen because right. it goes into these nanoparticles. It's kind of like a sponge made up of that's, one atom that's thick how they described it. layers. And, and it'll just suck up the hydrogen until you release it with heat or some other, mm -hmm. um, some other uh, you know, component that makes it release. So good. Well, that's that's good. Were there any folks doing um, drive demos or anything out there? I know they were talking about using doing that a little bit because now DOE has their own fueling station in Washington D.C. Yes, um, I think that was something that you have to sign up for, and I didn't. They did have a car door. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what was in the car door, to be quite honest. There were a ton of people standing around it, and I don't know what the man was saying who was at the car door. Um, but they did. Um, my understanding was they had sign ups for vehicle trips. 
I know you were busy getting your popsicles ahead of right, everybody. Right, popsicles else. and nano things. Okay, you I know. got it. All right. Yeah. So, um, did you meet any interesting folks there? I did. So, there's a team from InRail. Um, I mean, there's many people on the InRail team, but it was just interesting to see the breadth of material that they cover. And I think just the national labs generally, um, they're doing a lot of different projects. But it was nice to run into a lot of people who had actually done projects here in Hawaii um, and were mm -hmm. interested in our technology developments. And we're really pitching for the information that they've learned in the recent past and their knowledge of Hawaii and kind of knowing where we're going with our energy future um, and really wanting to re-engage. So I think we'll see some of them at Verge. Um, but others are just interested in stopping by and to see our progress and hopefully share what they've learned along the way. So were you surprised by how many people knew what we were up to out here in Hawaii? I was pleasantly surprised, particularly because um, there were only a few Hawaii folks there. Um, so I think that our attendance as well as the work that we've done has really, has really made an impact for the people that come here regularly because they're, again, folks from all over the world and the country um, who are at least familiar with I'd say a couple of our projects. I think about everybody I spoke to knew at least two things that were happening in Hawaii. So. Great. So good job, we've Stan. Doing some of our work anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Think Tech. Um, but also, what, were any presentations made by Hawaii folks like Mitch or anybody, or even yeah. our contractors? Yeah. So we had Mitch from HNEI, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, as well as a boss from US Hybrid, um, and so both of them had very interesting. Um, Mitch's was about hydrogen um, electrolyzers as grid stability, and then a boss is just entering a new project. Um, and I want to say it's with Nissan's, their electric vans. There's a fleet of vans. Um, and so the audience was really excited about both of them, um, just because, again, recognizing the integration um, and that interoperability that hydrogen provides. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of neat to see two people talking from two different sides, um, but again, still being able to kind of plug into that H2 at scale model. Um, so yeah, we had Hawaii folks well represented. Great. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and, uh, and cut away for some advertising here on ThinkTech, and we'll see you back in a few seconds. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At DiveHeart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. DiveHeart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, DiveHeart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. DiveHeart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day. Hey, welcome back to Stan, the Energy Man. And I don't have to say it's on my lunch hour today because now I'm getting a debrief from Rachel, which I have to do at work anyway. So we're working right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I uh, haven't had a chance to catch up with her since she came back from last week's trip to uh, Washington, D.C. So anything else uh, that sticks out in your mind about your trip to D.C.? Um, truthfully, I was just really excited to see so many people come. Um, and again, just pleasantly surprised by how many folks were aware of what we were doing in Hawaii um, and were supportive and super willing to engage. So even just talking to the folks in the California Fuel Cell Partnership, um, the information that they had about codes and standards and getting first responders on board and identifying safety information. I mean, they had free videos to hand out, so I came back with goodies for I the office. I know. had my picture on the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fire chief yeah. looks just like me. It's strange. Except the he has no hair. Must be the hydrogen. I have almost no hair. <laughs> Anyway, okay, well, thanks for that update from last sure. week. Let's, let's switch gears now and talk a little bit about what's going on at HCAT, which okay. maybe the folks here on, in ThinkTech land would like to know about. Let's start yeah. off with uh, some of the stuff we've been receiving uh, in the mail lately, like Ooh. those light carts and stuff. We've got shiny new light carts, so hydrogen fuel cell light carts. Um, it's funny, we were on Maui yesterday, and as we were driving out of the airport, we were passing, um, we were passing a light cart, and it was just a regular you know, diesel generation one. And I pointed it out to the folks in the vehicle, and I said, one day, that could be a hydrogen fuel cell light cart. We've got them at our office. Um, so it's really exciting to have them, obviously, on site, but um, just to also drive around the island and the state and recognize places that they could easily be deployed. Mm -hmm. And what's next coming from the same company? From the same company is coming um, similar uh, technology, but just the generators. 
So in the same places where we have our carnivals, our EK Fernandez, we have our street grinds, our um, just outdoor events where we need portable power, mm -hmm. um, instead of having those loud, buzzing, stinking diesel generators, we'll have two brand spanking new, clean, fossil fuel free um, fuel cell generators. Terrific. Yeah, yeah those are 5,000 watt generators, 5 yep. kilowatt generators. And um, they're, they're really awesome because uh, we're going to be able to provide the hydrogen right off of our Cook Street um, dispenser, yeah. and we can take them out and, and run them. I've actually already talked to the, uh, the folks in DBED that do um, oh, nice. TV and movie um, oh, pr yeah. promotions, yeah. and I've been hyping these things for a long time because uh, I had friends who did sound uh, tracks on mm. movies and things. And mm -hmm. Not only do they not like those noisy generators in the background, right. and a lot of times when you're out in the field, mm -hmm. you know, you have to live with it, but yeah. they also demand high quality on the line. In other words, okay. the signal, the power signal that comes from those generators mm -hmm. is kind of sloppy, oh. depending on the, the gens that you have, mm -hmm. but when it comes from a fuel cell, it's very stable and very clean. Okay. So we're really excited to show the folks in movie and TV production that this technology is actually great when they have to do remote stuff. Right. It's quiet, it's clean, and the yeah. signal's clean so that their their sound people don't have to deal with some of their issues uh, when they do movie okay. production. So we're gonna we're gonna start using those in, in that respect too. Yeah. And then I think next Monday or Tuesday we're supposed to take delivery on our range extender for the yes. gem. So why don't you tell everybody what that's all about? Yes, all things hydrogen. So for the folks who've been watching Stan, the Energy Man, um, I'm sure they saw the students that we had on from Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. Um, so those students will be forwarding their conversion project, which is taking our low-speed vehicle, so a little golf cart looking like um, vehicle, a gem, and adding a range extender with a hydrogen fuel cell, um, essentially to be able to keep the life of the battery going longer with less plug-in capability. Well, not capability, but less plug-in necessity. Yeah, being that we couldn't afford to buy a brand new Toyota or a Honda, yeah. you know, no Mirai or a Clarity or a, a We'll make our own. <laughs> yeah, we, we basically said we'd make our own, and we, yeah. we got a bunch of high school kids to help us. So it's kind of cool because it shows how basic the technology is that yep. we can get some high school juniors and seniors to come in and help us turn some wrenches and actually yep. convert a vehicle. So, yeah. uh, And we get to drive. We drove the gem vehicle over here yep. to the show, so... Um, that's the kind of technology we get to drive around town, and I have to tell you that just driving the gem around, yes. uh, I went past a couple of um, Hawaii Five-O shooting yeah. setups, and the the guys out there working the the, the grips oh, yeah. and everybody yeah. go, hey, where do we get one of those? Yeah, and made no noise, and and they really liked it. They thought it was cool. So I, I get a lot of looks from people on the street when we're driving that around because it's quiet, but it has plenty of pickup. Yeah, and pretty soon it'll be able to go 200 miles without having to be charged or refilled. We'll have a so, fancy signage thing yeah. happening, hopefully. So we can we can actually drive people around, because people, we, we want to always show people the technology, but when yeah. we're doing just Air Force projects alone, yeah. um, especially with a 25 packs bus, we have to right. find somebody with a commercial driver's yes. license, and at least now we can say, hey, jump on in, jump jump in the driver's seat, go yes. drive it yourself, and, yeah. and get some of our state legislators and mayors and stuff to yeah. actually drive a hydrogen vehicle. We get our yeah. kids out with driver's yeah. license, of course. Um. <laughs> You're scaring me now. <laughs> no, well, the kids scared me for a minute. We don't have our licenses, Miss Rachel. I'm like, what are you doing working on vehicles? Um, but they'll yeah. just turn wrenches. We'll, we'll get them up to speed. <laughs> But let me see, what other kind of stuff we got coming up down the pike? We're to, this week we're talking to the Air Force because yes. they, they provide us a majority of our funding, in mm -hmm. fact, pretty much all of our funding. Um, and we're working on our 95% review for the, the, the grid yep. and also talking about some of the other projects we have online, like the vehicles that we do have and where we're going with them. So that's keeping us really busy and, and actually stressing us out a little bit because <laughs> whenever you have to talk <laughs> about money and funding and stuff, it always gets kind of stressful. Yeah. But um, it's been a pretty busy week for us, a pretty hectic week. And uh, yeah. we've got Dave taking them out to the Big Island to visit Blue Planet. So, yeah. Paul, get ready. They're on their way. They're, they're coming to see you. And um, they'll be getting to see a microgrid in the works yes. out at um, Hopu Vava on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to that. Then come back and finish next week, do our program reviews for Bessie. And uh, Abbas will be out again. Yes. Yep. <coughs> we'll have to, fresh from the merit yes. review. He'll Gosh. be coming back to wow us with... Uh, with what he's uh, got in store, yep. and uh, and I'll pitch in that we've we've had some great discussions with some of our contractors and some of our local companies in terms of pro providing hydrogen um, <clears throat> locally for our, our transportation sector. So we have a couple of folks have been talking to me about 
some big companies that have fleet vehicles and also want to put PV on their roofs. Um, but they, they know they're going to have extra photovoltaic power available and they want to know what to use the, the PV for. So we're, we're connecting them with uh, manufacturers that make electrolyzers and make uh, vehicle conversion kits. And they'll be able to actually take that hydrogen, uh, store it, use it in their vehicles, and start to convert their fleets to green fleets. So I'd say within the next 18 months to 24 months, you're going to probably start seeing a, a little bit more uh, vehicle traffic out there that runs on hydrogen. What do you think? Is that realistic? It's not a guess. It's for real. Ar 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 <laughs> It's very realistic. <laughs> I know. I know. I can't help it. <laughs> can't control this one. It's just out of control. Anyway, but um, any other predictions you have for Hawaii over the next couple, 18 months? Great things. I predict great things. Now, I mean, we have Verge coming up next week. That's so true. that's an awesome opportunity for folks in Hawaii and around the world again to come and convene on what's happening here in Hawaii to bring their lessons from around the world, around the country. Um, so it should be a good opportunity. A boss will be speaking. You'll mm -hmm. have a hydrogen panel there. So Great. Um, again, if you don't get enough from Think Tech, you can get some more at Verge. And that's at the Hilton? Hilton Hawaiian Village. Yeah. Right? So next week, Thursday, block your calendar after you finish watching Okulea this weekend. Next week, Thursday, come out to the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And if you don't attend any other part of Verge on the morning of the Thursday morning, 22nd, we have the hydrogen panel. That's the first time that we've had a chance in the state to have a panel at an energy conference in Hawaii that's just talking hydrogen. So that's, gonna, that's really exciting for us, and we're looking forward to it. Well, Rachel, that's going to about do it for our timeline today, and I, I want to thank you for coming out and uh, taking some time off from work. I know your boss is really upset about that. I but, know, um, that guy. Tell I'll him. have a chat with him, and we'll square <laughs> him away. And uh, thanks for being out here. Thanks for having and me. And thanks for sharing your uh, insight on the mayor review back in D.C. Sure. from last week. So until uh, that brings us to the end of our show, and we've enjoyed bringing it to you, and I'm your host, Dan Osterman. Our guest has been Rachel James, the princess of Popocolea, and we've been talking, of course, hydrogen. So until next week, aloha.